He defeated Aaron Pico at Bellator 180 this past weekend, and it all happened in 24 seconds. You believe that? So his hourly pay is up there. Joining us now on the show is Zach Freeman. What's up, Zach? How you doing? I'm great, uh, guys. I, uh, it's nice calling in uh, with an interview instead of a question this time. So. <laughs> You're the man, dude. So, uh, you know, Aaron Pico, got, this is a guy that was talked about for a long time by Bell. So I think they signed him over a year ago and had a, his more. own little press conference. And, of course, he went out and came real close. I think he came within a point of qualifying for the uh, Olympic team, and, and that, that dream fell a little short. So he moves to MMA, and uh, 24 seconds later, he's already 0-1. Congratulations on your win. Thank you, man. It was it was amazing. Yeah. And I guess, I mean, this is – I want to know what you feel like 36 hours later from this win because everything leading up to uh, this fight was about him and there was very little about you. And are, are you at the point where you just understand the business or or was it disrespectful for you? Uh, you know, I uh, – I think some words got put in my mouth by a certain person, and, and it happens. I'm not the only fighter, but, uh, you know, I understand the fight business. And I think there's a lot to learn from this in the Mayweather-McGregor fight, you know. People want to count McGregor out. It's a fight. It takes one punch to change everything. And I just like my, my uppercut, it changed everything. Yeah. And whether that was the 50th punch I threw in the fight or it was the second punch I threw in the fight, it's a fight between two men. No one's no one's a super human, you know. We all go in that cage and we all bleed. So at the end of the day, man, anybody can win. To count somebody out is absolutely ridiculous. And I don't want people, you know, a lot of people wouldn't take this fight because they were like, well, if I win, everyone's going to be like, oh, he was oh no, he's never had any experience, blah blah blah. Look at his look at his background. Mm -hmm. The kid's been fighting in Europe and penetration. I mean, he's been going to Russia, Ukraine, you know, Croatia. I mean, the kid's been training his whole life to fight. And I took the opportunity. I wasn't afraid. I, you know, I capitalized. Do you want to run it back with him at some point? You don't need to right away. I would think that'd be, that'd be silly to do that. But I, I know he's – because you gave him that first loss – He'll want a piece of you at some point. Will you want that, or do, oh, do yeah. the ship sail well, when, when you get past guys? No way. I'm for sure going to do that, but that's going to be after I renegotiate my contract. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be for a lot more money than I did fight Aaron Pico for. And, uh, yeah, it's going to make for a great main event down the future for Bellator MMA. Did you get the feeling that they all, like, either Bellator or that camp feels like – Oh, that was lucky, 99, 99 out of 100, that, that type of thing? Or did some respect come your way from, again, either Bellator or that camp, the AK camp? Well, Aaron, Aaron himself, he was very respectful in the press conference. Uh, my first question is why was he even there? You know? uh, that was my moment. And, uh, you know, he lost. You know, why, why was he even up at the press conference? So that, that to me just shows they have a lot invested into him and that, you know, I'm still just Zach Freeman, you know, so I still have a lot of work to go before I earn the respect of, I think, Bellator mm -hmm. and uh, some other fighters. But, you know, anyone who's trained with me, they know, hey, I, I have just as much potential. I'm just as much of a prospect. I could easily be held, holding, holding the belt in a, in a year or two.